Now I want to do something super fun. Are you ready to do it? You ready, class? Yes. Since you guys are here and you've spent the last two days with me, I would like all of you to be able to leave with a headshot. How's that sound? So put your pads and papers and down on your sheets, and I want you guys to line up right here. We're going to run you through the machine like ground beef. I'll see all the ladies are immediately like going hand in their hair. All right. Cool. All right. Lena, you're brave. Let's go first. So I'm going to show you exactly how I would run through eight or so people in a row. How you doing? Good. You having a good time the last couple of days? Have you learned a ton? I've learned a lot. Do people tell you a lot that they love your hair? Like the number one compliment you get? I appreciate it. All right. Bring your knees this way for me, Lena. I want you to turn your head this way. Tilt a little bit. Bring your chin down. Perfect. Here we go. Let's show how great that hair <laughs> looks on camera. Bring it one and two. You got a camera ready smile. Bring your knees around this way. OK. Come back, turn your head, tilt a little. Here we go. One and two. Tilt this way for me. Yeah, you go. Perfect. And lean into me just a little more. There you go. Bring that chin down just a touch. One and two. OK, cool. Walk out this way. Do watch your step. Come on down. <laughs> Nice to meet you, sir. What's your name? Alex. Alex, pleasure. I'm Gary. Good to see you, man. How's it going? Yeah. I just want you to bring your knees around this way for me. Perfect. All right. Put those hands right here. Sit up nice and tall. Lean forward this way just a little bit. Bring your body this way just a little. There you go. You ready, Alex? OK. I want you to show me how much you like me. Ready? One and two. All right. Give me an angry one. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Perfect, man. Remember that what I told you about the afterglow of a good laugh is the, usually the best shot. This one's going to come right up. Bring your knees around this way for me. Cool. All right. A little off center that way. Lean into me. Tilt your head a little. Chin this way. And chin down. Turn your head. Chin up just a touch. Eyes to me. Ready, Alex? Here we go. One and two. Relax that face a little bit. Take a deep breath. All right. Good. And I want you to clench your butt cheeks as hard as you can. There you go. <laughs> All right, piece of cake. Thanks, Alex. Next, please. Sheldon, come on down, man. It's good to see you. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. I want you to turn your knees this way. Cool. Come back to me just a little bit. Put those hands right here on the tops of your thighs for me, if you would. Come back just a little more this way, like t twist around. There you go. Sit up nice and tall. I want you to lean this way. Turn your upper body towards me like so. Tilt your head a little bit. Bring your chin down. Relax those shoulders. Bring the hands up a little higher. That's good. Here we go. Ready, Sheldon? You are now famous. Boom. Tilt your head. All right. I want you to let's move this a little bit. Bring your knees towards me just a touch. This way, this way. Twist, not scoot. There you go. This way. This way. Ah, right there. You got it. All right, cool, man. You're digging it. Chin down a little bit. All right, cool. That was harder than it should have been, right? You and I have just had this thing the last couple of days. <laughs> I've seen you looking at me. All right, chin <laughs> down a little bit. Perfect. Good. All right, bring your feet around the other way for me. Perfect. Come back just a little bit. Nope, stay there. Do not move the stool, just twist. Turn. There you go. A little more turning. I should say turn. It's my turn. fault. <laughs> I'm a bad communicator sometimes. Tilt your head, chin down, turn your head a little bit this way. Here we go. Excellent. Ready? One, two, three, one, and two. Sheldon, you've been beautiful. Thank you. Come on this way. Go say hi to Kevin. He'll help you pick your image. No problem. Okay. Cliff, come on down. How's it going? Awesome. All right. You know the drill. You just watched these guys do it. Can you do it without me giving you any instruction? Okay. Turn this way a little bit for me. Perfect. Here we go, man. Turn your head this way just a little bit. One, two, three, one. Tilt a little. Lean into me a touch. You are one broad-shouldered dude, man. I tell you. Perfect. Oh, he's going to be a tough nut to crack. It's OK. <laughs> you, he, you know he was on Bill Nye the Science Guy? Did you know that? Yeah, he was. He was the big, sweaty guy. <laughs> That's true. It's a true story. I didn't make that up. Turn around this way just a little bit. Perfect. Keep going. Keep going. Right there. All right. And just lean this way for me. Turn that head. Tilt a little. Bring that chin down. Here we go. One, two, three, one. And good. And now do, do one for your homies. There you go. Give me angry. Give me serious. Mm. OK, perfect. Cliff, you've been amazing. Thank you. Proceed on out. Megan, come on down. Did you know I have a light stand named Megan? Really? Is that not awesome? <laughs> Put your hands right here in your lap. That's perfect. Lean into me this way. Tilt your head a little bit. Do you have a side of your face you prefer? No. Okay, turn your head this way. They're both perfect. That's why. <laughs> Either why would you like one over the other? Bring your chin down just a little bit. That's great. One, and tilt a little more that way. There you go. Two. Excellent. Let's bring your feet around the other way. Come back to me just a little bit. 
Turn it this way, turn your head. A little less tilt. Yeah, that's perfect, right there. You look awesome. One and two, and two, and one more because I blinked. Okay, perfect. Okay. Megan, you've been wonderful. Go out this way, you're all set. Next, hi, how you doing? Hi, good. Good to see you. I'm Gary, what's your name? Cindy. Cindy, nice pleasure. This you. is the first time I've seen you ever. Right. <laughs> all right, bring your knees around this way. Cool, would you sit up nice and tall? Bring those hands back a little bit, good. And I want you to lean this way. Lean a little bit more, tilt just a touch. Cool, there you go. All right, and lean into me a little bit more. Feels like a lot of lean, but it looks sexy as hell, okay? It looks really good. One, two, and three. All right, now relax, <sighs> relax the face. Give me a small smile that just touches the corners of your mouth, because I want to make sure your eyes look, you have beautiful eyes, I want to make sure they look really good. Cool, all right, now bring your feet around this way for me. Cool, come back to me just a little bit. Lean a little back that way. Yeah, there you go. Okay, perfect, turn your head. Relax your shoulders, that's very important. Perfect, here we go. Ready? You can give me a big smile if you want. Pretend I have a big bag of money for you. That doesn't make you happy? No. <laughs> that's great, you did great, thanks. Next please, all right. Is that everybody? Oh, get in there. Get it, girl. <laughs> this Perfect. is for the chat rooms. <laughs> uh, I just requested this. OK, nice to meet you. I'm Gary. Hi, Gary. Nice to meet it's you. It's a pleasure. Do you have a side of your face you prefer? Um, this side. I'm going to pretend you told me your name was Kenna, which is what people do when they introduce themselves to each other. They give each other their name. Did I not say that? No, you didn't. What did I say? Okay. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm sure it's really nice to meet me. <laughs> it's been a long couple of days. My name is Kenna. Hi, Kenna. Nice to meet you for the very first time ever. And you sit up nice and tall, and you're going to lean into me this way. Good. Perfect. Just like that. You have really cool hair. Do people tell you that a lot? They do. Good. What about, you know, you have a really unusual but eye I, color? I blink a lot. Do you yeah. know your eye color is like less than 2% of the population? It's true. Yeah, I did know that. All right, bring your knees around this way for me. Good. Turn your head this way a little bit. Yeah, right there. All right, now I want you to give me sexy. <laughs> Gonna turn your head this way a little bit. You can't, already, you, you were doing it already. That's the secret. One more, perfect. Okay, you're all set. Kenna, lovely to Fantastic. meet you. Fantastic, now I have a new shot for Facebook. Oh, well, let's see. <laughs> Beautiful, all right. I like the second one, five, 7597. Put a mustache on that one for Kenna. In Photoshop. Okay, sorry, I should have warned you I was coming out. Now. When I say it's exhausting to do that 300 times in a row, it is exhausting to do that. It really, really is. It takes a lot of the blarney. You've got to really turn up to 11. However, if you really want a, a bunch of pictures of people looking morose like Cliff over here, then you can, you, can be, you can do that however you want. That's how I do it. But at the same time, what really happens is when you've got a line of people coming, people are standing in line and watching me be so stupid with everybody that they sort of like, What's he going to do for me? What's he going to say to me? And it becomes this thing where they're, by the time I get to the fifth or sixth person, they're really excited about what dumb thing is going to come out of my mouth, you know? And so it, it becomes a really, really fun thing. You want it to be a good time, somebody to leave feeling like, even like, you know that feeling that if you go through a line at the theme park and you ride a really short but really cool ride and then you get off? That's kind of what I want to go for. It's totally not that, but I want it to sort of have that feeling a little bit because People are so sometimes uncomfortable, especially in these situations. They're getting a photograph most of the time because they kind of have to. A lot of these companies, they have a picture that they want for every single employee on their email uh, address, on their email signature, or on their file, or if they're in support, like it comes up in all their memos and things like that. So you actually kind of have to have it. But I want them to like it. I don't want them to be surprised. So I want it to be so quick and so weird that they leave like not knowing quite what happened and then they go see the photo and then they really like it, you know? And it's pretty cool that we've got, we can say honestly that we've got a good mix of people and what they look like in this group, all different colors, all different heights, and everybody got a headshot that is way better than what you're normally gonna get in that situation. Is that pretty cool? And you guys can all have those, by the way. Not you guys, but you guys can all have them. Isn't that cool? All right, cool. I think we're getting pretty close to uh, showing everything I can show about this, so I'd love to take some questions. All right, well, we have a bunch of questions. Keep, uh, keep them coming, and you guys grab a mic if you guys have a question in the audience. All right, so one question that had come in earlier was if you can use this setup uh, to, with speed lights. Can, any, can speed lights be you used for any You absolutely can. The biggest problem is going to be if you're shooting in volume, 
it's going to be running out of battery power. However, you don't have to use this setup for just volume. This setup can look really great just having a one-on-one -on -one portrait session, even if you're going to do it for 30 minutes or an hour. So um, I actually have used this with a speed light. It's not going to get to as quite as powerful, but it comes across pretty darn near the same thing. So yes, you can do this with speed lights. The biggest problem you're going to find is to find an octobox that you can stick a speed light to and then hang it upside down. So that would probably be your biggest barrier there. But you can totally do it with speed lights. Uh, now that you mentioned that octobox, could we just uh, could you just point out again what sort of some of the sizes are of the items sure. that we have this that we're an using 80s, and the tripod and it's all on the oh, gear list yes. that you can get just for signing up to view the course. But um, this is a uh, and the tripod you said yes. Oh, this isn't my tripod. This is one that Creative Live provided for me, but I'm sure I can find the model number somewhere. And the pistol grip? Is yeah, that, that is. Also? These are. I know it's all Manfrotto okay. stuff. Manfrotto 222. Great. This is a Paul C. Buff 86 inch. It's called a PLM. It's a parabolic umbrella, basically. And there are a couple of different types on the inside. There's like a, there's a soft silver, which is the one I use. And then there's a, a, a super silver, which is a little punchier. The soft silver is good because it gives you a softer light. And for this setup, I really want it. If You might go a little punchier if that's your style. But um, I use the soft silver. And then you, this, this is sold separately. This is the, um, the diffuser cover for that same umbrella. You know how you go on Amazon and it goes, people who bought this also bought this? You'll have that same thing on the website if that's where you buy it from. And then this is a 47-inch Octobox from Paul C. Buff that, um, that is fitted to attach for an Alien B, which is a Paul C. Buff product, I think. And then um, down here, you have a 3 by 4 um, Sweet Light System Super Silver Stand-Up um, uh, stand Reflector. And then another uh, just Alien B with the aluminum cone that comes with it on the background. And then the 5 by 7 pop-up background. And I think the company is ProMaster. But there are tons of companies that make those. You can get them from anywhere. Fantastic. Anyone in here? All right, we'll keep going uh, with the folks at home. Let's see. Um, can you use the speed light? We already talked about that. With that large light, would you be able to shoot multiple people Absolutely, in this yeah. setup? In, in this same setup, you'd need a bigger background to do it this way. Okay. And you would probably need to put a little more distance between you and the subject than this. Because I'm, as you can see, every shot, it, the head's almost cut off um, in almost every shot. I'm shooting for the crop here. So you would probably need to use a, maybe a wider lens and back up a little bit and have a bigger background. But yeah, you could use this for multiple people. You're going to find that um, it's, it's going to be a very useful light source for more than just this, because I use this for stuff all the time. It's actually really good for any volume photography. I've done this for uh, uh, school po portraits before. And I got to tell you, when I did this lighting setup for school pictures, and I shot a bunch of kids in a row, you know, you, school picture day, I used this. And I got the highest sales that I've ever had from a school because they like the way that it looks so much. It's really kind of a cool thing. So I'm wondering, Gary, I think this is a great suggestion um, from Old Red Eye who was saying, would it be possible to look at one of the images and for you to point out actually against the image which light was affecting what? Does that make sense? Maybe yeah, not the one Yeah, I think that there's a great me, image right on the screen that we can use. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Can you guys get me if I move over to the screen, or should I just stay here and point at it? OK. All right. So what you have here is remember we talked about this when you have the unusual, the unusual catch light in the eye? Because right there, forever, if you ever use this picture, Kenna, I'm going to be with you in the photo, right in the pupil, OK? So what you have here is you can see, especially on this monitor, which is a little bright, but it's a good representation, you have a specular highlight here, here, and here. And that's all coming from that light up there. So you have a very flat light, and you have very, it hides a lot. It's very, very flattering for people. But you have a, a nice specular highlight from that 47-inch uh, octobox here, here, and here. Now, if you look behind in the background, you can see a gradient, which is basically just taking that black and causing a, the separation from the hair and the outline of the person on the background. So you have the main fill light, which is basically just a big flat light. You have that accent light going boom, boom, boom. You have the reflector bringing light back into the eyes, not that Kenna needs it with those eyes. It looked pretty good. And then you have the light on the background causing the gradient, turning that black background into a, a nice gray that fades off into black, creating a natural vignette. Cool? Yeah. No, that was really great, um, that re really helpful for the folks at home. And once again, a question had come in um, from M. Heath. The space between the person in the chair and the background, I think mm -hmm. we determined that was maybe like 10 feet Looks or so? Looks like about, in this setup, about 10 feet. You can make it longer if you want. Okay. Um, 
the, the thing is I use it at this distance because this is a very small background. If you have a full size seamless paper, 9 foot, 12 foot or whatever, you could put as much distance as you want. All that's going to matter is um, how it looks when it turns out. So you can put a lot more distance between the background. You just need a much bigger background. If you go too much further away with this, you start to shoot off the edges and then it becomes sort of difficult to, uh, you know, make it easy for yourself in post-processing. But Gary, I'm wondering if you have any sort of final words for us as we kind of recap uh, the entire class and what we set out to do um, from the beginning. I will give a speech as long as you guys all hum the Battle Hymn of the Republic while I talk. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, you don't really have to do that. Um, I've had an absolutely awesome time, especially you guys have really sat through a lot. And I know that some of it has been like a fire hose of information. Um, but I'm going to give you the things that I want you to take home the most is that, um, one, adding business headshots to your brand or your business, if you're not already doing them, can be a really great and rewarding way to bring in some extra income and to, in, and to make your life a little bit better. The point isn't to have more work for the sake of having more work. In reality, the ideal is to shoot less and make more money. Isn't that right? If I, as a wedding photographer, could shoot one wedding a year for $300,000, I would have the rest of the year off, and it would be incredible. But in reality, we can't all have a business model like that. I don't know anybody that does. So you want to look at how much money you want to make, break that down, and make a plan. And if this can be a part of your business, that would be great. The other thing I want to encourage you is to challenge yourself creatively, because it can be really hard to find inspiration when you're shooting something like this, anything in mass, the more you do it. Don't let your, the job that you've chosen to do because you love it take the joy out of your life because you've chosen to do it for a living. That's a very, very tight rope to walk sometimes. Draw those lines in your life to where you're going to say, this is going to be my work time, this is going to be my personal time, and this is how my work time is going to make my personal time better. And that's absolutely the guiding principle of my entire life. I want to be a photographer. I want to be a great photographer. I want to be inspired. I want to be creative. Ever since I was a little kid, I've had that itch in the back of my brain to like just make something. You ever feel like that as a kid? You just wanted to make something. You were making robots out of popsicle sticks or making hats out of aluminum foil, and you just wanted to make something. And this job is cool because I get to make stuff all the time. And not only that, but, but with this and other areas of my business, you get to be kind of a visual historian. You get to shoot things that are never going to be able to be shot again. And that's a really cool responsibility, especially in like the weddings, portraits, babies. My God, we have such a responsibility. And we can all think of stories of things that we've shot for people that aren't around anymore. And we have those people in our lives, and we cherish the photos and the albums and things that we have. So even something that seems as mundane as just shooting business headshots can be something that means a lot later on. And you should take every single job with that much seriousness when you do it. And so. Find that balance. The number one thing you're ever going to learn in your entire life that I've ever learned is that I have to learn to balance things. Too much of anything, one way or the other, can be a really, really upsetting to your life. So learn to balance your work and your family. Learn to chase money and make it, but don't make it a priority because it's a means to an end. And this can be a great way for you to do that. So I really encourage you guys to take some of this, to use it, to go make money and spend time with your families. That'd be awesome.